Hey guys, and how's it going? I was out on a pick picking up another machine for a video for another day. And while I was there, this was there. It's a 1974 Honda Z50 monkey bike that looks like somebody did a restoration on and bought some of the later parts. At first I thought it was a knockoff, like one of the later ones, judging you know, by the chrome and the tank and the seat and all. But it's not. It's a 1974. It's a real deal. It's the original engine on it. Just some aftermarket pieces added to it. So somebody went through great lengths of uh, bringing it back to life, took it apart. It's like they painted the frame and did all that kind of stuff. New lights and everything on it, but it's not complete and it doesn't run worth a damn. I uh, ran with it, tried to push start it. First I tried kicking it and it didn't even want to kick over. It does that slip that the Hondas do with an auto transmission there. So it wasn't even kicking it over. So I ran with it, ran with it, ran with it. I was ready to be done as I'm walking back up to the guy pushing the bike. It started up and ran for about eh, 10 seconds and died. So we made a deal. I bought it and another machine. And I figure we'll uh, turn the camera on. Hopefully it's something simple. If not, either way, we're going to film it. And we're going to see what it takes to uh, bring it back to life. Fortunately, somebody went and spent all the money already on all the pieces. <laughs> that made it easy. There's new tires on it. And there's a box of the old parts. Kind of came with it too. The old gas tank, side cover, uh, some other bits and pieces. Kickstand that's not on it yet. So it looks like it got like three quarters of the way done with the restoration. So without further ado, let's get you popped in the stand and let's see if we can resurrect this thing and get her to go putt around. So I already know it's got spark, although it's missing the ignition switch and a bunch of other stuff. Because uh, it did start and run for a second, so I, I know it did have spark for, at least for a little bit. Let's look into the fuel system. We'll pop the, uh, I don't know if we're going to pop the float ball off yet. Let's uh, see if we can get a urine sample out of it the way it is. See if there's any water or bad fuel in it. Yeah, see if we get anything out of it. Should almost like continuously run. A little bit of kind of like burping itself. Is that it? Yeah, that's not enough to fill the float ball. Let's go see if uh, we can change. I know it's got gas in it. Yeah, let's see. Well, that might be your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing going to the car reader. Um, open her up all the way. I'm gonna take her right out. See if we get it. Yeah, there it goes. Might be air locks, huh? Kind of doing like a weird. Like there's no venting for the float pole. Hmm. Well, there's your problem. Let's go pop that gas line off. See if we get anything coming right out of the pet. Here's the fuel that was in it. You see a little bit of dirt. Don't see any water. Not terrible though. See, it's missing some screws here and there too, and some covers. Let's see if we can get it off the carburetor. Well, looks like it's it's peeing pretty good there. Just not going through that carb. See if we got a shut off. Yeah, we do. All right. I'm going to go pull that carb off because we definitely got something going on inside there. See how that looks. Yeah. Cleaner, but um, still got some crap in it. It shouldn't be too bad to get this off. Gonna, let's see to get the air cleaner off. This should spin off. Take the slide out. Tiny, huh? And then those two screws. Yeah, let's get that bowl off of there and see what kind of stories it has to tell. Seems like it's got some gas in it. Yeah, it looked dirty. It was just kind of weird the way it was, um, like chug chugging out of it. Like it would let a little out, like almost like it was like airbound, you know? 
Go dump that out. And somehow, somewhere, generally the float balls have a place to breathe. You know, like if you, you can't gravity feed something that's sealed, it, it just won't go in. It has to have some place for the air to escape as the fluid fills up the bowl. And it might be that one right there. I'm not sure. Let me get the float out of it. Look at its level. The level looks fairly decent. And yeah, that's something that could plague a machine. You, it'll run, not run, which is what it was doing for me. You know, then the, he, the person I got it from didn't have it long. He kind of, I think he bought it done. He did buy gaskets for the gas tank, but. So I see that might be the vent right there. And that might be clogged. I'm going to go take a piece of hose and put it over that and take a better look. It might have just like a little pinhole in the top of it that has to be able to breathe. It's either that or right there is not open to atmosphere. Yes, yeah, so I put a little hose on there. I can't draw through it. I'm not, and I'm not sure that's where it's supposed to breathe, but that is sealed up completely. I'm gonna go poke around the tip a little bit <laughs> and see if there's a pinhole that comes out. We could probably actually just shoot some uh, compressed air through there too. Maybe a better way to explain it. So when I had the carburetor on there and uh, the fuel was coming out, you ever take um, like a gas can, it's got the little vent cap on the back of it and you don't take the vent cap off and it, um, you know, the gas kind of chuggles through until air fills the thing back up. That's kind of seems like what it was doing. So that's clear, but I don't think it would vent through that. I'm not sure of that because I would think the fuel level is going to be up on that about an inch. I still think this would probably be where the breather is. I'm trying to push it. It looks like something came through the side over here. getting wet on this side so it is blowing through somewhere. Let me put the um, hose through the base of it. I wonder if we can push through. <laughs> yeah, I heard it gurgle out some stuff. I can see the hole now. It's right in there on the side of it. So I may have blocked it off when I put the hose over it. Well, we can uh, put the bowl back on it, hook fuel up to it and open the pet and see if it pisses through. Actually, just pop the uh, air fuel mix out real quick. Blow out that passage too. Well, we got it. The bowl looked clean, but it definitely had an issue. This one is just for uh, idle speed. It just holds the slide up a little bit. I don't know if that would unthread. I don't know if that's in there with any kind of, usually they thread it in. There we go. The O-ring is gone. We're going to have to find something for that. And sometimes you can push the emulsion tube out of it. Need like a back side of a drill bit or something that's the right size. There we go. Yeah, it'll look pretty clean. Ah, there's a little bit of dirt. I can see it right there on the end of those. All right, I'm gonna rinse that out real quick and we'll put it back together and we will put fuel to it and we'll see if it drains through the float pole. That's a good thing I had a Yamaha carburetor kit in my stash. I need that O-ring. I'm gonna 
want you to cross your arm. There we go. Get in there. All right, let's see if we get gas flowing through it now. Turn the pet on. I don't remember if this is open or closed. Let's close it for a second. I'm trying to fill up with fuel. And hopefully. Anything? <laughs> yeah. Take it right out of there. I'm still acting the same. Let's um, unthread the carb. The slide. The vent on the gas cap that does anything. It was on the open position. Still kind of acting the same. Must have missed it. Let's make sure that the gas flow coming out of it. Uh, the tank we did earlier so i doubt that would be the what it was yeah that's flowing fine right. i'm gonna try putting blowing fuel air in through the bowl and see if i can get it to pass through the carburetor i got a piece of line on it very restricted I didn't think it was the needle and seat it wasn't acting like it but we got to go back in you ain't got it till you got it it ain't right it ain't right yeah there's no Barely any fuel in that bowl. Probably should have checked that the first time, huh? The float level doesn't seem like it's all that far off. Could be. Get rid of the needle all together and blow through it. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> so it's got a clog, a restriction without the needle being in there. So try shooting some carb cleaner through that. And barely wants to go through. Much less than should. See if that did anything for us. Nah, something's wrong. We get this out of there. There we go. Let's see if that's clear. That's fine. It's in here. And that's fine. <laughs> Somebody's got a problem. You can blow through both of those. Let me take a quick peek. Do you think? Did it clear itself when we took it apart? I'm going to look under the scope real quick. Look down in there. And see if we get a good passage going through. So here's the other side of that. I took it out. That is a super tiny opening. I don't think that's... um. That's almost like a jet. It's, it's not even... I'm gonna try opening that up with a drill bit a little bit. That, that's just too restrictive. 
That's not letting any gas through it. Probably a new carb kit that he put in, you know? I'm gonna go poke at that with like some wire or something. I got another number 60 drill bit. I think I'm gonna go try opening that up. That is tiny. Yeah. I'm gonna pop that probably in a vise or something. I'll, I'll spin this through there and open that up just a little bit. Yeah, let some gas come in. Hopefully, it didn't ruin that um, surface down on the inside of it there for the seat to seat. <laughs> yeah, let's see what this time has to offer us. Turn on some keys. Give it a second. And hopefully. <laughs> That's better. Now it's filling the float ball up. A little burpy. Let's take the gas, the gas cap is off. Good. Well, there's was your problem. Let's go throw that back on there. I'll give her a couple of kicks. We'll see how it runs. And so far that needle and seat is working. If it wasn't, the float level fuel would keep coming up, 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 and that tube that was sticking up out of the flow pole, well, that's an overflow too. It would just f uh, flow up into that and come out that same tube. And it's not, let's go give her some choke, give her some kicks. Yeah, before we do that, we should not take somebody else's word for it, right? Make sure there's some oil in it. Yep. You never know. So the, the kick pedal was not catching all the time too. Let's see what we get. We don't have a kill switch. <laughs> yeah. One or two on the choke. See, it's not, it's not even turning it. Okay. Just kind of goes right through it. And that choke off. Hopefully, that'll go away. I think it went. There we go. I don't think they have a decompression valve. No, I don't see one. Trying to get it to go. Just give it a hair off a choke and let it run for a little bit if we can.
little bit. Got a dial it in. Choke is mostly on. Get some temperature in it. <laughs> it's all over. A little rattly. Hopefully it's not in the engine. <laughs> to lift itself. As soon as it turns, start turning that choke off. It'll stay rolling. That's good. Getting there. You gotta run a bike. I don't know if it's gonna take any revs on the throttle. So, um, I'm gonna run the air fuel mix out a little, then bring our idle down so we can sneak up on that. Stay going. Doing some hunting. I don't have the air cleaner on it either. You can run that in. It runs rough. Wants to die. I'm gonna lose it. Ah, I couldn't get it in time. All right, so I'm gonna screw with that a little bit. I'm probably gonna pop the air cleaner on it, and we'll see how it goes. A couple things I want to check. Do I want to check valve adjustment and everything? Probably should have done that when it was cold, but you know, hindsight. Well, at least it does run. We're getting warmer. That was one problem fixed on it. That was probably a hard one to chase, huh? They kept trying to get it going. It would run, die, run, die. It was starving for fuel. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go tweak that a little bit, and I'll bring you back. Let's open that filter up. See what we got going on here. We got no filter in our filter. I'm gonna see if I have a piece of material I can cut to put inside there. Got some parts that came with. Let's dump that out. Make sure there's nothing we can use right now. Yeah, some... I see pieces from another carburetor. I don't see another carburetor, but pieces from one. It's like we got a kill switch. I don't know what that harness is for. Uh, the gas cap and then in the box we have an original seat that they took off of it an original gas tank that's pretty pretty cool I don't know if they try welding it there doesn't look terrible yeah see they braced it right there huh and The original side cover. What else have we got? Kickstand. And then I think inside here we have the original. Um, the, whoops. <laughs> there it goes. The gaskets. Not the gaskets, the um, labels for the gas tank. We go on there. Gas tank and side cover. But no air cleaner. As we were. So we'll make an air cleaner. This is stuff that would go like in a big computer cabinet. Let's see if you can you need a little smaller than that. So that should do that. Let's cut that out and shove that in there. That'd be acceptable. I have to cut it down even a little more than that. That's good. At least you got something. It's got a little, lo little locating tab. Now we got an air cleaner. Yeah, let's try it again. 
I turn the idle back up a little bit and back down on the air fuel mix. The air cleaner's not it now though. Listen to how fast it returns to idle. Change it without me even touching it. Let's go get a little steam underneath it. We'll get the back back tire up in the air. We'll pop it in gear. We'll see how the transmission is. Yeah, the idle's kind of jumping around a little bit. I might have an intake leak. I'm not sure. Let's go run it through the gears. Seems pretty quiet in the gearbox, wherever we're up. And she died. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing intake leak. like that and then drop it down. There's an O-ring on here, but there was no gasket on the other side, so I, I kind of wrapped my finger around it. I was trying to see if it would make a difference at the idle. I don't hear anything, and we don't know what's going on down in here, too. It could have one off, so. A lot of times you do is you'll spray carb cleaner on it, and you'll hear a, a change in it. Like now it's running away. Without doing anything, it's just changing. <laughs> it's like teasing me. Bring it down a little. I will spray some on it. We'll see if we get a change. Yeah. Bet you we have an intake right down in here. to get a kill switch. So that's why it's got an intake leak right there. As soon as I spray it, you hear it drop off. Let's open this up and see what's going on. I think the chances are it's just not tight. Eh, that's pretty loose. Yeah, that side was loose. Let's, um, I'm going to take it off anyway. See what we got in there. Like I said, the upper side with that nylon was got an O-ring on one side. But you would think it would have like a paper gasket on the other. I don't know if there's an O-ring down on this side or not. We could make one if we have to. I just wasn't getting a, a correct response out of the throttle. It was, it was weird. And that's feeling like it's a little on the... It's like somebody made a strip. That might be pulling threads with it. it. Does not feel right. I'll turn that thing off in a minute. Fortunately, this is some of the stuff that you run into when somebody does this, which is fine. It's all part of it. The price I paid was good. That has. I have a feeling it's missing. Feels like it's got a gasket on one side, right there a little bit, but nothing on the other. Yeah, there's a gasket there, 
But nothing on the other side? Is it stuck on the intake? No. I'm not feeling anything. So I'm gonna take a minute, I'm gonna go clean that surface up too. Even like that ceiling surface. Because what's happening is it'll suck air. Instead of sucking air through the carburetor in the mix, it starts sucking air right through this area. And then the mix of the carburetor is just all over the place. It can't maintain itself. And that's what's going on. Yeah, I'm gonna take a razor blade, clean some of that crap up off of there and get that carb. I'm gonna flip up that intake, maybe just take it off. And uh, might have to make one, make a gasket for that. Yeah, you could tell where there was a gasket on that side. You can see the imprint like that one is. And this one's actually missing the whole section right here. It's not even here. So I'm probably going to go take this right off. And for now, I think I'm going to just take some right stuff and we'll, we'll kind of like coat it with it. And we'll make it so that it's, um, where'd the blade go? And if it cures our problem, we'll make, um, Make some up. There you go. It's three quarters of one. Plus the fact it was a little on the loose side too. So I'll clean that surface up. We'll put a little bit of sealer on each side, put it back together and see if the idle calms down. Yeah, so there's where the issue is. It pulled threads out. I wonder if they knew it had an intake leak and they kept trying to tighten it down to the point where that happened. So I'm going to take and for clean this up. I may try to find one that's got a little bit longer threads. I'm going to measure down on the hole, see how much further we have. We may have a, make another that much. I'll get a longer bolt to go and try to take care of some of that. Actually, it looks like somebody, they don't even match, do they? Yeah. <laughs> that one even metric. <laughs> they might have run something else in there. All right, let me go see what I got. That's probably, actually, I think that's what they did because that one's already longer, right? Yeah, a thread or two. Actually, so that's all there is right to my nail. That's all the threads there is. So that's where it would bottom out. So what happened was they ran the bolt in, bottomed it out, it was still probably leaking, and they kept trying to crank it, and took the threads out. So we need a shorter one, one that's that long. And it probably had a washer on it too, be my guess. Yeah. So I ran the bolt in from the other side. It actually feels pretty good. I was going to try, you know, worst case, you got to drill it out and uh, go larger. See how the other side is. I actually feel pretty good. Again, they don't have that much distance to drop down. That one feels like it's got a little bit more room. All right, I'm going to find another one that's this size. We'll put it back together. So I went looking for the bolt in that box was the correct one. It was sitting in there. So I don't know if they just put the wrong one in there or... They're trying to fix something. Let's uh, turn that idle up a little. And we'll give her a shot. See if we get a different response. I got to make gaskets up for that anyway. But we're still trying to zero in on what's happening. Already sounds better. Definitely sounds much more in tune. Still kind of, yeah, the, the drop down is taking a while to get there. We're off the 
the idle. So this whole the out the screw to the upper section just holds the slide for height. It's not changing air fuel mix. The other one's changing air fuel mix. I tried backing it out. I tried to get to run a little richer, get rid of that slow idle drop down, but I'm I'm off. I'm already out as far as that slide will go down. The cable could be holding it up, but I'm not sure. Definitely much better. Let's go uh, poke around it a little bit more. I think I'll stay around it. We got a couple of things to look into too. Like I said, it's missing some screws on the side. We will pop this off, see what's going on underneath here. Make sure there's nothing goofy. We just gotta kinda go over everything. That's not even tight. The wheel. Yeah, I don't think this thing was ever ridden. I don't see any lube on the chain at all. I don't even see any dirt up in the fenders. We gotta get a kill switch on it. <laughs> How do you wanna shut it off? Damn it. Is missing something there? There's a chain tensioner underneath here. It actually sounds pretty good though. It's definitely running much better now, huh? We could do that. <laughs> All right, let's go uh, do a little bit more exploratory on it and see how things are. Uh, we gotta possibly look into, I'm gonna look up a wiring diagram. Or at least a kill switch. We can get that set up, and then I'm sure we got like a maybe a high. Is that high beam, low beam? Is it how many wires are coming out of it? Three. Yeah, so it's gonna have a high beam, low beam switch and a ground for that. Back in that stash. That looks like it. There was a body of a switch. Do we see the rest of it? What's that? It's like parts of one, huh? On off switch. There you go. You think that's aftermarket or? Maybe it's, they try throwing up on there. Yeah, because no, that's kind of matching up, is it? What's inside here? Let's go open that up. Looks like a light bulb. Yeah, it's a light bulb. Put the kickstand on. Has that one got a gasket on it? What's this one got? <laughs> That's got a gasket there. That's tiny though, huh? That's even smaller than it was on there. Yeah. We got the big bore kit. <laughs> Anything else? No. I got a, um, there's a CT90 up there, like a parts bike. Let's go look and see if there's anything we can take off of that set of points, right? Turn up kit, yeah. Uh, let's see if there's anything we use off of that. If not, we'll just go with, maybe we'll throw that on there for now. So this one's got, we won't have turn signals. Heavy, low, and high beam. That's going to go out in the wrong, I, I, I don't even know. I should probably look up on my phone what side, what controls are where, right? Hmm. We need a horn too. If you want street legal, we got a horn. What's that? The other half of this. So that's gonna be a rear brake light switch. I would like to make it street legal, you know? So we can steal that. We got a parts bike up here. And this one's got directionals on it. And on that horn. And on this side it's got off on run low and high beam. Not quite sure what side would uh been tapped through to run. Hmm. We need to do a little shopping online and see what it looks like. I'm back at the bike just kind of looking at wiring and see what we got. You ready? <laughs> 
Yeah, all right. Well, there's those. I put a little wiring pile off up there and only two wires are going up. The red and the black are the only one used. There's a blue and a white and they're tied together. I don't have a wiring diagram. I tried real quick on my phone to look it up, but I wasn't getting anything. It seemed like I got everything but a 50. I also don't know whether it has a battery or not, whether it used one. I gotta kind of jump around the forms. Let's just go take a, take a little exploratory peek of what we got going on in here. Need a town millimeter. Let's get this cover off too. I also, because I want to inspect that sprocket. I know the, uh, like the CT70 has a battery in it. Now we get wired into it. It's all new. It's supposed, that's supposed to wiggle around. Don't get paranoid about that. That's supposed to have a bunch of play in it. That's okay. I'm just looking at what they did for wiring. There was a harness that came in that box too, so maybe they yanked that out of there. Also, don't know if it's the correct. So we got so there'd be like an upper and a lower coil. One generates spark for the flywheel. I mean for the uh, coil. And the other one is the electrical system power out for the electrical system. And hopefully they're both hooked up. Again, I don't know why these two are tied together, but. Uh, so I get a wiring diagram. I'm not gonna really know what's going on. So I gotta go hunt one of them down. All right, well, it's a few days later and I was able to grab a high beam, low beam switch that mounts in the handlebar and I was able to dig up a wiring diagram on it. Fortunately, it's in black and white, but it does call out what color, what wires are. And the headlight and the tail light that were added to the bike, the wires coming out of them are totally different. This bike was set up uh, more of a trail bike. I don't think it, was from the factory a street legal one so it only has a tail light not a tail light and a brake light so the two wires going to this one one's brake and one's tail it's not ground it's got two elements inside it so to make it so that it would switch over we would need a uh, switch for the brake pedal probably go on here somewhere it just turn a switch on and off and the same thing for the front brake to work the rear brake light. Other thing too is it's 74, so it would need turn signals. 73 did not. So I'm not really concerned about putting it on the road. I just want to add it to my collection of, uh, this is the one that's missing <laughs> in the link. Maybe I'll show you later. Uh, anyway, let's, I'm going to go pick away at wiring. I don't know how much we're going to go film of that because stuff does not match. And we'll see what we can get functioning and see if we can get some of this stuff working. If we do, great. If we don't, we're still going to button it up and just not have any lights working. Take it for a spin. I'll give you a catch up about an hour later and you know, prodding and measuring and cutting and splicing wires, <laughs> going through all the mess. Found a couple of things out. Yeah, take a second to explain it to you. So for the bike to run, just for the coil, is just the black wire. Everything else you can disconnect. The black wire is the only thing that energizes the coil coming off the magneto. Power, it's got like three different levels of power. So there's a red, a blue and I want to say a tan coming out of it and they seem to be just tapped off of different spots of like a, the coil so different voltages come out of them it seems like all of them are AC also try putting a DC meter across it you don't get anything I don't think there's a regulator anywhere on this bike I don't see it that's just a coil I'm not quite sure what that is going through there uh, anyway so I chased that down and ran power with a transformer just to kind of energize things and instead of having a bike trying to run and chased all our wiring so we have high beam low beam kill switch and tail light it does have capacity for a brake light and it did have capacity for a brake light before too because i found the old front cable this is for the lever you agrees you, you would grab the front brake and it has a switch built into it in the center of it but that switch is no good. So I was gonna chase that. I was gonna put that back in and get us a brake light working. Uh, for now, I think we're just gonna go jump over that. So I think we're pretty good. Again, I'm not sure which one to pick off of for the voltage. I don't wanna blow the bulbs out by uh, overdoing it on a rev. Here, I'm gonna fire it up, I'll show you. How much gas we have before it runs out, the tank is off of it, but. It's lit, but it's not very bright, but you rev it up. And same with the headlight. 
And then it's got high and low. Then it's just kill switch. I think we're all good. I had to drill this out. This wasn't, there wasn't a provision for this, but I think this bike is kind of a mix of different parts and pieces. The only thing I noticed too, I took the gas tank off and usually like rubber grommets right here. Well, they were just tape that was built up. So I may try to find something, uh, maybe like O-rings or something we could stack on there and give it a little bit better avenue than that. I think um, mechanically, I, I, <laughs> till we ride it, who knows? I think we're close. I know the one thing we could probably jump on though is getting the decals on the gas tank. I don't know if it would be better off with the on or off the bike to go and do that. Let's go look at that, that stuff that we have and see what uh, it's involved in it. Yes, I just labeled the wires that are hanging out of there. This is the one, if I want to go hook up a brake light, I just got to go jump off of power up through that, that switching cable and then back down to that wire right here and that'll work the brake light on it it should have one for the foot peg too is the other part of it the uh lever generally i i think it's law to have each one hooked up to some kind of switch so there may have been something that was on here some kind of provision usually it hangs like right here it's almost like the same idea it's got like a spring that hooks to it and it pulls down on it and gives a, a little power outage okay so there's our Anyways, call it victim or uh, copy. And I'm trying to figure out what's the best way. Do we just kind of wing it? <laughs> or, you know, because we're going to go peel this off. It doesn't have like a split back. A lot of times if it's split, you can start, you know, you could tape it, right? Flip it up, pull one side off, lay it down, get that side taut, flip, flip the other side away peel that one off and then do the rest of it. I don't know what the best, yeah, I've done this maybe once in my life. <laughs> Learning curve. Um, maybe if I take a piece of tape, I'll, I'll figure out where I want it and we'll lay a piece of tape on the tank where this material would come to and we'll, maybe we'll mark it. Sound good? Good thing you can only see one side at a time, huh? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go try to set that up. <laughs> Wish me luck. Well, I was going to put a piece of tape down here and use that like as my straight edge. I also sliced this nice and straight, but I, I think it's, yeah. Let's just try flipping it if it'll flip. Maybe I should have done it the other way. Let's see if we can get this off. Some of you, yeah yelling at me right now because you know I did clean it off the glass cleaner right, here we go <laughs> it's warm out the bikes are out I'm trying to make it so I don't get any wrinkles in it curve to it so it doesn't want to that stripe doesn't want to um might be okay it's got some flex to it you know well we're committed now <laughs> let's get this out of the way you won't damage the other two you put the wrong one on it's on the wrong side This tank is shaped a little bit differently too. The back here, the curve is much more gradual. So I was trying to place that, but let's give her a good, let me give her a good rub with this thing on there. Might be able to take a blade too, and uh, if we have to slice, see how it looks. Huh? Down the 
same angle as the other one. Let's step back and fire our work order damage. What do you think? I think we're pretty close. It might be the only thing, I think it's a little too far forward. Like I said, the curve on this one drops off gradually where the curve on this one's much sharper going across the back. So I was trying to eyeball which one's which. That's yeah, all right, we'll put it on a bike. At 100 miles an hour, you'll never know the difference, right? All right, I'm gonna go uh, take out the take out. <laughs> I'm gonna go try to attempt the other side and get it roughly in the same place. And then we got that little one for the side cover. That has to go on. Yeah, the first one's easy. Because <laughs> the second one is when you got a match, right? It's like making a copy of something. Right, let's see how this works out for us. I probably should have done it from the bottom. There's less of a curve so the tape doesn't want to pull off. Come on, give me an edge. Sure, at the factory, they probably had a jig. You had laid the thing in and Put something flat on a round surface. I think, like I said, I, th I think the decal actually isn't bad. It's the um, this plastic that I'm working with. Doesn't have any forgiveness to it. Uh, oof. Is that a no-no? <laughs> Just trying to get that bottom one not to have any wrinkles in it. There's one right there. Let's work that on there. Getting a good thing. You only see one at a time, right? All right. Oh, that looks. Pretty good. I don't feel any wrinkles yet. A bit of glue or something right here. Good. Think it matches? Does that look like that? I don't see much difference. It looks like um, this one kind of goes downhill more. I don't know. This strap looks right, but it does look like. The writing is downhill on that one a little more. Oh well. Maybe not. <laughs> That's how it's staying. All right, let me get that little side cover done. So I was gonna put some O-rings on those little studs, but the left to right movement on it, even if I do that, I don't think it's gonna be able enough to hold it. So they gotta lock into there from those tabs, but the width of it is not gonna be great enough. So I probably had a piece of rubber that kind of came up around the edge and back down. I wonder if maybe um, we can use like a piece of fuel line or something. We need something that is roughly that wide. Let me see what we've got for hose, if anything kind of lines up to that. In the land of hoses. So we want something that it's kind of have a really small ID. That's too big. That might be good. I wonder if we got anything a little bit more. That's too big. Yeah, it's only about a quarter inch stud that sticks out of that thing. You know what we could do? We'll work with a smaller piece. Maybe we could wrap tape around it too. Maybe something right in about in the middle. Right, we'll 
bring a piece of that down, a piece of this down. And what else we got here? Maybe that. That, that, that. You want to come for a ride too? No, you're too big. Actually, that might be what we're looking for. It's got a nice fat outer jacket. There we go. I'll start with that one. It's, a little, it's like right there, but it's not going to stay in place. Let's see what was on the tank. Yeah, a little under. A little under on that. We have a little bit of movement on there. I'm not that concerned about that. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe we'll keep working until we find one that fits tight on the pin. And we'll build it up with tape too. Yeah, it seems like it'll do it. I wonder if we could actually, if we can't fit one inside another. Would that work? Yeah, that's going to be a tight squeeze though, huh? We could probably slice it. What if we could slice it lengthwise and try to feed that one in the other? Huh? Yeah, who's your daddy? That'll work. They almost look OEM. Hopefully, you cut them the right width. <laughs> You're gonna find out right now. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. I was already to rock and roll with the table down, but I forgot the kickstand. You get that thrown on there. Ah, right, one last function check before you take it off the bench. I think everything's pretty good. I'm going to turn down the idle a little bit and check the tire pressure. Let it run for a second. a little bit because it's gonna as it warms up it's gonna come off a hair. Where is it? That sounds pretty good, right? Hi Bean Wobi. Thank you. <laughs> Boys, this ball. Smoke's coming off the exhaust of the tire. Get your motor running. Head out on the sand pit. Mean and nerdy. <laughs> Not as bad as I thought it would be. Oh. 
probably 30 miles an hour top speed. Gonna do in the loose sand. Probably not much. I gotta flip my gas over to upper. It goes on reserve. I hope. <laughs> you might be asking a little too much of it. Just saying. So light, just pick them up and go over them. Try climbing one, don't you? <laughs> That's a no. How about we go that way? We'll hit that one with speed. Make sure we're in first. Third gear is clanky or something's just rattling in third gear. Kind of makes a noise. Don't know. Oh, those big kids riding it. Give me first. Is that first? We got second. Oh, it's first. It's like driving on a flat, like driving on two flats. Yeah, I don't know what happened to these. I don't know some kids were running them around and towing it behind a four wheeler or something and thrashed them. Making a mess. Here's a Cadillac. Yeah, that is my assumption of what happened. 
There's about his four wheeler marks all over. She runs pretty good. Yeah, it's 50 cc. How much can you really ash from it? But it seems like it's decent. It's probably the first time it's ever really run with that carburetor issue. So it's burning off some paint off the exhaust and that kind of thing. Yeah. Probably go up a little higher with the idle, maybe. Okay, it goes on its own. <laughs> so I think it came out to be a pretty neat machine. I don't have much into it. These things are stupid expensive too. You know, all, all us old men trying to live our childhoods or a child who we didn't have. For me, there was a kid, you know, across the uh, trails. We all rode around on bicycles and he rode around on one of these. And then he got the Honda 70 after he had the Honda 50. So, I think this is my, uh, I don't know, what would you call it? <laughs> Redeeming my childhood? All right guys, with that, I think we're gonna sign off. Had some fun with it. Got into you know, some oddball stuff with that carburetor with that needle, just that the seat not having enough room for the fuel to come in. I'm sure it probably drove that person nuts trying to figure it out how to fix it. But I think we got it. I don't know why I'm out of breath, not like I pedaled. <laughs> Alright guys, I think we're gonna go sign it off right here. I uh, got some other stuff to get into pretty soon. Uh, another one, another machine where this one came from, but uh, really interesting. So till then, I'll see you later. We're gonna quickly line up a couple of the small bikes that I have, just giving you an idea of the scale, the difference that's in them. So the mainstay probably is the 70 that's in the middle, the Honda Trail 70. Then there's an ST90 on the right, and then the 50 on the left. The ST90 on the right actually runs and rides. Like that one, I wouldn't be afraid to be riding around town. The other two, they're just a little on the slow side. So that's like, you know, 25 to 30 miles an hour. That's like 35 miles an hour, 37 miles an hour. That one, will, you know, good back one probably get you up about 50 but if you're on roads that are speed limits like 35 40 it's, it's actually pretty good so i had another one i had an st125 and that was a really good bike i wish i never traded it uh, it was actually partial trade i think for those two to get going but if you find one of those those are really awesome i just give you a quick close-up on them so you all have the same kind of idea you can take the handlebars and fold them down so you can you know stow them away pretty good i was just riding this one earlier today on this one, you flip a lever up on the handlebars and you can turn the handlebars lengthwise of the bike for uh, size-wise. And then the 70, got the two wing nuts, kind of like the 50 does. You loosen these up and the handlebars spin around on itself and it can tuck them down nice and low. That one's got bad fuel and it's got to get purged out. And then the 50. I need a little collection. I, I do have a, um, a Honda CT90, which is, well, I'll show you. That's a Honda CT90 right there. I got the uh, battery box off of it because the battery went pooey sitting up here. It needs air in the back tire. This one was done. Everything works really good on this one too. This has a high and a low range for trail riding. It's got a um, another shifter in the back that you can uh, 
uh, swap the, the level of it. And then it's got like a, um, a uh, either fuel or water you could put in that tank and haul it around on you. That one's a nice bike too. Really cool. Well, while we're at it, <laughs> Honda CB350 we did a long time ago. My Yamaha 175. And yeah, it's spin around. So the last one I have is this trial spike, the Honda TL250. It, as far as trial spike goes, it's a little too heavy and bulky for what it is, but it does have first, second, and third gear are super low. And they're kind of meant for like, you know, putting around a trail or a course, I should say, not putting your feet down, trying to keep your balance, you know, jump over from one thing to another. Again, this bike's you know, kind of heavy for doing that. Generally, they, they don't even have a seat at all anymore but this is a neat little one all these bikes have uh, videos on them and different playlists and whatnot of them getting put together so if you want to check those out feel free much longer because all these were basket cases when i started with where the uh, honda 50 was uh you know pretty much all done just needed to get some uh mechanical straightened out all right guys now i'm done i'll see you